welcome to Knit, Knit One Heart Two. Two, episode 27. Yay! Yay! I'm Sheila, also known as Sheila D37. <laughs> Ravelry and Spark people I had to remember that, sorry. <laughs> and I'm Wendy, also known as Penny Winnie on Ravelry and Penny Winnie Two on Spark people. Um, we have 380 members of the Ravelry group, and I have to tell you, nine of them since I checked yesterday. <laughs> So I am thrilled. We're getting very close to the 500. Yay! And wow. as I will discuss later on, we have money now from our cafe press that will help us to buy prizes for and the And send prizes. Yes, and to pay postage. Sorry, so, um, yay. Um, yeah, we, I wanted to say a big thank you to the people that bought swag last week. We had 15 orders, not including mine. I ordered something for myself. I did not order for Sheila, even though I was going to because she told me not to. No, that's fine. I, I will get it when I can get it. I was going to order it for her birthday. But she already got me something for my birthday. It's video proof. <laughs> I know. <laughs> anyway. Oh, my hand looks really... Look at, how, look at the way the camera's working today. Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's, like, like, it's like a toddler. Oh, oh, my other hand. No, but it just... It our faces big. look really small and our hands look really big. Not when you put your hands back here. Small. Sorry. All right. Um, yeah. So we made about $40 um, from t-shirt sales. Yay. And we will get a little bit more in royalties, but I won't know until the end of the month what that amount is because it depends on the sales that we make. So all of that money is earmarked for um, our Rhinebeck giveaway swag, which we are working on, and postage and future prizes for and the knit along. The podcast the is knit along swag and postage. Yeah. All the money that goes to that you either donate or purchase off of Cafe yeah, that we Press. Make from Cafe Press, which is we'll go metal. straight to the the process, fund. <laughs> the process of having a podcast. Yes, it does not go into either I yeah. or Wendy's pocket. We don't keep that money. No. We use it for the podcast, and we're so excited because that means we're going to be able to have more contests or better prizes for contests, and. Um, and we'll be able to have swag for Ryan back. We wanted to give away like pins or something, and yeah. this will help us do that. So, and it means that you know it won't be coming out of our pockets when we ship. People yeah, we shipped recently, and you know. I know it's and and we so far up until now we've done everything we, out of our own pockets. Yeah, which you know it hasn't been a lot, but we've been. But it's it's you know this will give us the leeway to do more. Um, and we appreciate it so. so we much. do thank you so. Um, oh, I want to give special name. Thanks to Lois, who is knitting my bag. As everyone knows, I love her, and I'm so thankful for everything she's doing with the Podcasters Challenge because it's thankless. And yes, well, that's and um, be my she she outrageous. bought us a a bag from a tote bag, a tote bag, so from the cafe press store to yes, give away. She is going to give it to us. She's donating it to the podcast to give away. So that'll be one of the prizes, either for the knit along or for the 500th oh. person. One of the two. 500th person or 500 group member? No, I mean there's going to be a contest when we reach 500. I was going to say, is it going to be the, don't <laughs> the say it's the 500th person because no one's going to join up. They're going to be waiting. Everybody's going to wait. They'll be jockeying for position. Yeah, no, don't. Yeah, no. That. When we reach 500 members, we're going to have a um, celebration. A random contest, drawing, a drawing of all the members who have joined us. Yes, and oh God, one of you better. will win fabulous prizes. I want to say a big thank you to the three people who have donated with the button that's right up here. Somewhere. I'm not going to be able to do there that. I just remember it's on your Oops. side. Yes, it's up to So you. I want to say thank you to Candy, Virginia, and Karen. Thank you so very much for your and generous donations. We really do appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, that is awesome because it means that we can do more cool stuff like and be more um, in line with some of the other podcasts that get to do fun stuff for their viewers all the time. And it's a way that we can thank you for watching Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Um, because... <laughs> I don't know why you do. Say that again? I don't know why you do. Oh. <laughs> don't listen to her. I know, but it just seems odd to me. But um, it's, it, no, just because, you know, it's like people watching me. Why? <laughs> people watching why? you, why? But why, are we, why do we watch Why do we them? watch the other ones? I know, it just seems odd to me, but it will be a way for us to give back to you, so I'm really and happy about that. we appreciate it. We do. I can't, I'm just so overwhelmed that I can't even tell you, and I'm going to start crying if I talk about it. So All right, let's, so let's just jump let's into just what's stop. on the needles. And on the dance cab. On the dance cab. Especially for you, Lois, and uh, <laughs> John and Nicole, on the dance cab. Um, I'm... 
unfortunately, my little monster really hasn't received any much more love since last week. This is Irving, the Icebox Monster. Sue, Queen of Chaos. Sorry, I think I just spoiled this for you if you didn't already know. If you're watching, step away. It's too late now, <laughs> Whoops. but step away. Just so, forget, unsee what you just saw. <laughs> <laughs> you did not see it. You saw nothing. This is not the present you're getting. <laughs> Move along. <laughs> so the only thing that I did do is I got one little foot. See, cute little foot. It's cute. And I'm almost done with his second little foot. Those will get slightly stuffed, maybe even more so. And then I'm going to use the orange that's in his eye patch or her eye patch or whoever's eye patch for her arms, his arms. On my project page, it's listed as Frankie with an IE, so I guess it's a she, but yeah, maybe I'll change it to Frankie with a Y. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how names goes like that. So, yeah, this is my Irving the Icebox Monster, Rebecca Danger from the Big Knitted Book of Monsters. Big Book of Knitted Monsters. Something you were like close. <laughs> uh, US 3 Comfy Worsted in various colors that seem to go well with Halloween. I love it. Um, so that's, whoa, that's on the needles. I also have, um, let's go with this, my Shetland shawl. I've done, let's see, Ooh. one, two, I do, I've done the neck and then three or four repeats. Oh, it's coming out awesome. It is going to be so pretty when I'm it's done. I'm going to try and stretch it out for you so you guys can see it. Isn't that pretty? This I is love the Shetland that. Shawl. I hope you can see it. By um, Evelyn Clark. Yep. From, I don't, the big... Rap Style. Rap Style book. Rap Style. I think you can buy it separately, though. Um, I believe you can. I think you can buy... This is in Cascade Eco Plus... I want to say Interweave the, Press has it on their online store because it's an Interweave because press. Because it was yeah. an Interweave design. Um, it's a very popular one, popular shawl. Yeah. And it's done out of Casco Eco, and I think it's the Shire colorway, if it has a color. Um, forest green is pretty much pine green, you know. So I'm really loving this. It's super, super easy. Um, my goal is to do at least one repeat a day because it takes you hardly anything. Yeah. Um, I was doing a repeat last night, but in the Northeast, it's been kind of sticky lately, so my hands weren't <laughs> moving so quickly. Um, so, yes, I only did one repeat, and um, the tra it's trash day today, sorry. The catering truck will The catering by. truck has arrived. Uh, not quite yet, but it, you'll know it when it does. Uh, U.S. size 10. Where's my notes? I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, I did, oh, yeah. U.S. size 10, 6 millimeters. Really liking this. Yeah, I think that's going to be awesome. I can't wait to see how it looks when it's done. And I'm using my bag. I think Wendy got this for us. I did. Last time I was in the Outer Banks. Pretty cheap project bag. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> I love these bags. And it was pretty cheap. Yeah, it's like, what, $3? It was, was cheap. Very, very cheap. Inexpensive. But So that's my second thing on the needles. My third thing, and I'm going to save the podcast as challenge so yeah, that we can do it together. We'll do it the same third time. thing is on the needles. It's a test knit. Oh, um, Di Rachel from Diabolical Yarn asked me to test knit her mitten. And so it's a top-down mitten. Uh, it's, a re um, it's a pattern that is a recipe, I guess you can call it, mm -hmm. um, where you can do it in any weight, and it tells you how to do it. This I am doing in Cascade 220 on size 5 needles. Here's my thumb. Cute. These will probably be a gift for a teacher because it's that time of year. And if I have enough yarn, I'm using it out of Cascade 220 out of like a baby blue. Cool. If I have enough yarn, I think maybe not enough to do a hat, but enough to do a headband. Oh, yeah. Because, you know, enough for maybe to keep the teacher's ears warm while they're out in recess because... Um, our state has you go out just about every day as long as it's above 20 and not rainy. Yes. I think that's a law. I think so, too. So that's on U.S. size 5, 3.75. I also have another one that's in my car. It's um, I cast on for another one. One of those laces in the shepherd sport weight. Yes. Teen colors. It's uh, like a lighter blue. Not a baby blue, but... Not our navy blue, a royal blue. Yeah. And white. Looks actually pretty good. Um, that one, though, 
it's it's more snug like a sock and I don't want it to be a sock mm -hmm. so I gotta rip back and just do one more set of increases but so that's a lot of my needles is that it no well <laughs> besides this oh yeah I forgot about that so this is the podcasters challenge um, I am at a point where I am going to bind off for the armholes uh, that's actually my next row is to bind off for the armholes um, in the pattern it has you do the back first and then the front uh, so I'm gonna bind off for the front armholes and then go right into the back and bind off and start knitting that now what I've seen from other ones and I want to just say thank you to all of those in our group <laughs> who are knitting the best with me because I felt a little left out but I actually think I might be equal or to more. you. I uh, equal or more to you in um, the knit along. So I, who would have thought? On the other it? hand, I'm not keeping track. Yeah, I know. I'm not really keeping I'm track. I'm just happy that people are enjoying the challenge. Yeah, well, I just didn't think anyone would be knitting along. A lot on of baby vests. Vest. Yeah. But you know what? There's a lot of babies out there. I guess so. so. Um, this. Oh, I'm gonna show you a. I'm gonna use Nicole's from. Wolf Farms word. Modification. No, what did she? I don't remember. <laughs> oh, what did she say? It wasn't modifications. Mistakeifications. Uh, Mistakeification. So this is going to be the back right here. And the back, I have one more repeat. So I'm going to put the heart in there again. Unfortunately, the heart didn't come out as good as I wanted. But here's my mistakeification here. You probably can't see it. It's right there. I was supposed to purl two, then knit two. I think I knit two and then purl two, so there's actually a garter stitch going up on the, on one of the cables. I noticed it about where my finger is here, which is about oh, yeah. six rows up. Duplicate stitch, my friend. Nah. I'm it's in the back. It. No, it's not at all. It's in the back. This is, it's on the back, so if the baby is lying down, you're never going to see it. <laughs> or if you're holding the baby, look where your hand gets placed. There you go. You're never going to see it. <laughs> now, uh, see, uh, it's... Oh, it's minimal. It's minimal. It's the average person looking at it's probably not going to see it. No. But I'm not going to change it. It is what it is. I'm really liking Good this. Good for you. And um, I love the color. I color. actually had to do. I did one more repeat of the pattern. I was supposed to stop and do the V shaping here, mm -hmm. but my rows, even though my gauge was right for mm -hmm. my inch, not for the rows. So I did one more eight. Row oh, repeat, yeah. which um, and for some reason I have gaping holes that I'm gonna have to fix on this one for some. From the cabling, it, yeah. it might it might um shake itself out when you block it. I'm hoping, but so this is and if you can see, I'm gonna show you right here. That's the heart. Oh, there you go. There's my little heart right Cute. there. Cute. Um, and my little pretzel. <laughs> and my little pretzel up here. I like the pretzel. So this is uh, US 7. US 7 is 4.5. You'd think I'd know this by now after 27 weeks. 4.5 in Dream and Color Classy Blue Lagoon. Yeah. And if I have enough, I'm going to be doing a hat. Probably with just the plain old cable on the sides. Well, that'd be cute. So we'll see. But where I added more rows, I don't know if I will have enough. So that's her podcast. That's my podcast challenge. I did work. I compelled myself to work on this. I'm <laughs> not loving this project as much as Sheila's loving hers. I love how it looks. It's coming out gorgeous. It is. It's really beautiful. So I am doing the Celtic Cable Scarf, and it is by Vanessa Lewis. And like all of the challenge patterns, it is free on Ravelry. And oh, I'm yes. using Vintage Made Made Blueberry Tweed in an Aran weight. And I'm kind of enjoying using this yarn, but it's rough. I mean, it's before yarn was processed. Oh, my. Yeah. It's lopey style. It's it's not that bad. It's not hairy like lopey, but it's rough. It's unprocessed. It's unprocessed hand spun wool, and it you can feel the lanolin in it. Yeah. And, um, you know, so it's a little not what I'm used to. I got kind of a little hangnail right here, and um, this yarn on. has really been aggravating it. <laughs> So it's been difficult. I'm using US 9 5.5 millimeter needles. This pattern originally called for DK weight and um, smaller needles, but I converted it to the Aran weight and the larger needles because I'm going to make it some kind of a buttoned cowl. So um, I, I was going to make one that crossed across the chest and buttoned. 
like this, but as I get well, further on it, I'm like, you know what? It could just be a tube. Yeah, because you got one more week, lady. <laughs> I know, and I just, well, I knit most of this yesterday, so I think I knit from here upwards yesterday. She'll tell you why in a moment. <laughs> why she hasn't been knitting <laughs> I know, on it I'll in show a moment. You. Addiction. I'm out of control, man, and I blame it on Penny Knits. I do. She started the ball rolling, and I'm just Thanks out of control. Lot, Penny. So yeah, but um, I love the cable. I think the cable is really pretty. I think it looks like a pretzel too. Not as much as mine does. No, but I do love the cable. I really like. I like this. the edging cable. The edging cable, I am so in love with, and it's so easy. I don't have to look at the chart for it. And I just it's. Can't believe I love the edging. This. This would make such a pretty edging on a sleeve. Oh, yeah. Um, of course, you'd have to knit it side to side. But it would make a pretty sleeve edging. It's so, I love it. But the project, I'm like, meh, I'm not really loving it. I'm not suffering through it or anything. You know, I just... The, not feeling the love. Not feeling the love so much. She needs to dump the project, but she can't. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so this is like, I don't know. I'm, I'm one of those people that has a hard time just stopping. But, um... Oh, no, I wouldn't either. Well, I, I, I mean, it's I'm the challenge. I'm close to it a couple so. of times. But, um, yeah, so it'll get done. I'm hoping, I'm actually kind of hoping that I'll finish it tonight. Oh, That's really? my goal. Yeah, and I'm going to work on it today. Because the other part of the problem, aside from my little obsession, which we will talk about, is that I haven't been able to knit on my Gawain sweater, which is my other thing on the needles. It's Gawain by Allison Greenwell. I've shown you before. It's a $7 pattern on Ravelry that I'm doing in Dream and Color Classy in Dusky Aurora on US 8 5mm needles. And I did not bring it with me because I did not knit on it at all this week. None. And I said to Sheila, I'm not even bothering to bring it in. So, the reason. But let me just make, yeah, this is the reason. It has nothing to do with the podcaster challenge. <laughs> Because as you can see, it's not stopping me from knitting on my stuff. <laughs> no, <laughs> I am. I am not knitting on for another reason. Okay. So anyway, I didn't bring Allison Greenwell's sweater wrap going in, and I'm sorry. And I'm. I am feeling a lot of pressure in my head that I'm not going to finish it before Ryan back on the 15th. So I really feel like in order for me to be sane, I have to finish this today so that I can knit on the sweater. Um, but something else is going to But I, I know over. Something is, else is taking over. I told you last week that I was interested in making what I was going to call a hexasock blanket that was going to be crocheted instead of knit, <laughs> and that I was thinking of using the flower to hexagon blanket pattern by Jesse Rayot, R-A-Y-O-T, on Ravelry, and it's free. Um, and I... On Friday, I was knitting or crocheting, and I modified the pattern. It's a five-color pattern. I wrote four in my show notes, but it's actually a five-color pattern. I modified it to be only two colors because five colors it's making those many changes. There's already a lot of ends to weave in. Mm -hmm. That would be just insane. Um, and so I liked it so much, I did a couple of the hexagons. <laughs> just a couple. Just a couple. Isn't this so... Freaking cute! I am doing this out of, yeah, I've done quite a few. So that's, I think this is like 12 or 13 hexes. And I'm, I'm doing one right now on my needle, see? Her hook. My hook. <laughs> She's randomly picking these up. I am randomly. You can, see. you can see, I call this one the Halloween one. It's orange, black, and white. Um, and then there's the Christmas wreath one. It's not look like a Christmas wreath. Um, and then there's the one that's just really giant that's throwing everything off. That's all right. You'll figure it out. It'll block out. But I am just enjoying it. And what I'll tell you, I there's this really wonderful UK yarn seller called Yarn... No, Knitting, Knitting Goddess. Goddess. Knitting She's Goddess. She's the one that I used um, a little sock blanket skein from on my little hat. And I posted the colorway in that just a side note. I found it. It was Flower Power. Flower Power. All right. That's pretty. Um, yes, I was a member of the Sock Blanket Club, and I got, I don't know, I have 20 or 30 of these little, like, skeins. A lot of the members were doing, I think what was popular at the time was either the mitered squares 
There was another one the, too. The, yeah, a couple of years ago, the mitered squared sock blankets but this seemed to be very popular. All a million different little colorways. Colorways. And so what I do is I randomly dig in the bag. Let's see, here's your little. That was my old sock blanket. See, with the needle still on it. Yeah, I know. I need to really undo that. I was doing. I was knitting hexagons. Um, but they were coming out too pointy. pointy because I needed to decrease less. They could look like something a stripper would wear. Yes, I'm no, sorry, the they do. And um, I, I didn't feel the love for it. It took too long to knit them. Yeah, let me see. You're going to rip them out? Yeah, you want to rip, yeah, them out? rip them out? If you can get here, I'll give you the bag. But anyway, I have a little sock blankets. And the reason you see me wearing one around my neck is because I am too lazy to wind all of them into tiny little balls. So I crochet from the um, the hank around my neck, and then when I cut it off, I twist it back up. And I am just going to keep doing this until I run out of that bag of colors, and then I'll, I'll crack gonna into my... It's going to take a long time. I think I might even get a lap blanket out of that bag because it's a lot of yarn. Yeah. Um, but then I can crack into my leftover sock yarn bag, which is like this tall this wide it's a big ziploc giant ziploc storage bag but i love this and i can make one of these little hexes in about 15 20 minutes do you ever have to wait for your kids in the car yeah i know that you should put another hook and another bag in your in car, the car and, have and it. make it so that you have some car blood. I love this, and I love it that I can throw like a handful of these skeins in my purse yeah. and my crochet hook and make a bunch of them while I'm waiting. Because, you know, even if I repeat some of the color combos, it's not going to matter. It's going to be a big blanket, so. Well, and it's random, so. It's random, and so it could. I've already repeated a couple of the colors. This really? orange came up twice. The orange in here oh, yeah. and the orange in the flower. But it's in a different position. Yeah, it's in a different position, and I don't know. I just totally like the orange love and purple. It. I do too. I I love this one too. This is one of my favorite ones. It reminds me of a pansy, and I, I I love the Halloween one. My kids were totally cracking up. It looks like I can't believe that I picked white and black and black and orange as the two colors on us, but I randomly picked it. And my daughter is the one who randomly picked, she picked out these two colors. Sometimes I let my kids grab the things out of the bag. <laughs> did they random enjoying. or they, did they look at and try No, and they just randomly put their hands in and they grab two colors. And um, I'm, there is a lot of end weaving in. I've done the ends on this side. Looks all nice and neat, but you can see. This has way more ends than normal because I started... I don't know what was happening. I would be getting done and I'd cut off the thread and then I'd be like, no, I need to use that to crochet. And I did about, and then I started just doing them individually, but I realized that um, the best thing to do is attach them one by one and with the tail end of the thing. Oh, I thought you were going to do it five at a time. Well, I realized that that is Not a stupid good and makes you have a million ends to even, whereas um, if you attach them at the same oh, time, okay. then you just have the one end. It's, it, it does, it's, isn't that pretty? Is that flower power? I think this is flower power. Yeah, it's pretty. There are so many pretty skeins in there. Really are. I have a bit. I don't have as many as I you think does. that, I young, think I just did one month. I did, I did three months, I think. Knitting Goddess. Knitting Goddess. Dot U dot C O the Knitting Goddess dot C O dot UK. And I think she still sells the mini. She does. She so, has color sets too. I looked on her um her website just recently. To find out the color of that. Yes, to find the color of it. So she sells in color sets like blues, yellows, greens, which and is great. And you can also order them individually in a hunk. Yeah, really affordable. I think one sock skein was at the time. Like three dollars. Yeah, it's, maybe a little bit more. I love that. It was club, really affordable. But I stopped doing it because I wasn't. I didn't enjoy knitting that hexagon blanket that I had started. This is much better for me. And you know, if I do run out before I make a lap blanket sized blanket, order more. I'll order more. Somebody also posted, and it might have been on Plurk, that somebody else was doing socket skeins. Socket skeins. Sock blanket skeins. <laughs> I made up my own new word. Socket skeins. Socket skeins. I have um, some Miss Bab samples of sock weight yarn well, that the I got. Well, the other thing too is we've been to what's called a yarn tasting in our local yarn store, Butterfly Yarns. That's right. And um, they give you little samples. I mean, 
that maybe would, not enough for a full hexagon, but you, but you probably add get two, together. Like the center yeah. and the edging, yeah. I made little uh, corkinies. It's the little ornaments with the little hats, the little gnome hats with the cork in the middle. Like I made little those, Santas. Yeah, I it. made those one yeah for Christmas for my teacher gifts. Yeah, it's um, I'm I'm, I'm enjoying it, but the downside <laughs> is that when I should have been working, I could have. I could have totally finished this easily this week or worked on my sweater <laughs> and instead for like two whole days all I was doing in my free time was working on these little I don't know I just I find it very relaxing and I, I blame you Penny Nance because you got me doing that bag the the unpronounceable bag that I showed last week and good Heckle, heckle boytel. Which is crocheted bag or something? It like might that? be. I think that's what she said it was. Um, yes, the unpronounceable bag, which I loved so much, which was doing little squares. Did you finish it off yet? No. No, because you've jumped into those little <laughs> hexagon squares. I can't help it. They're so She's addicted. Fun. I am. I, I think that's how people feel about that beekeeper's quilt. They're just addicted to making those little puffs. Well, I like it because. 15 minutes and my little project is done. And I'm like, woohoo! I was just going to say, it feels like you have a mini project. <laughs> and the time. other thing that I love about it is the color changes every time I do a new one. So it's I'm kind of excited to find out what it's going to be next. Like right now, this one is like a rose and orange oh, inside. Yeah. And the outside is going to be this green and blue. Um, and I'm just, I don't know, I'm like totally loving it. So... Yeah, anybody else who wants to um, do one of these, I can highly recommend the um, yeah, I was just gonna say flower what's the hexagon. Name? That's is a, that the name that you? That's the pattern. That's you're the doing? pattern I'm using. Again, she has it written for worsted weight wool, and she changes colors um, five times. I'm using fingering weight wool size USD crochet hook, which is a. Hopefully, it says mm. on here. Three and a quarter millimeter. Oh, it's three and three quarter. Oh, it says D or three USA, three and a quarter millimeters. So this is a US D or three. I didn't know they had numbers. I that must be. It's little. To say it's a did. little one. It's a sock weight one. It's the same one I used for the heckle. Boitel. Heckle Boitel. Heckle Boitel. I don't know how to say it. That one. That's just too many words. Too many letters for me. But um, yeah. If anyone else is interested in doing it, check out her pattern. Um, she shows her finished blanket in worsted weight, and it's super cute. She also tells you how you can make some of the um, petals a separate one that sticks up, so oh. it's like 3D. I'm not doing that because that's too fiddly, but um, <laughs> it's super cute on the one that she did. But I like it because it's really simple, and as you can see, I don't after doing um, 13 of them, I don't need to have the pattern anymore because it's intuitive. If, you, if you're a crocheter, it's intuitive. It's not as easy as the squares for that bag that I did, but it's, it's easy. If it's, I think the only thing you need to know for this one is chaining, slip stitch, half double crochet, and double crochet. So it's, it's easy. Um, yeah, so I'm enjoying it, and hopefully I will be able to stop doing it. And if anybody knows of any other sources for sock blanket skeins, the mini skeins, post it in the thread because I'd love to check out some other mm. ones in case I end up needing to buy more. <laughs> we'll see how long I'm Don't excited about it. this. Don't post it. Don't post it because she'll just buy them anyway. I know, but I just, I'm enjoying it. And I, I don't know, something about the craziness of it I just really love. So that's all I have on the needles. And the hooks. Um, rate your date? Yes. Rate your date. I have nothing that's new. I have a few that are old, and one person asked me to show this. So, this is my baby surprise. Which I adore. Sweater. Looks like one, doesn't it? Ha, ha, ha. If you've never seen a baby surprise sweater. You have to origami it together. You do. You have to origami it together. Um, Yarn Harlot just finished one. And, oh, yeah. um, the baby that still hasn't come. <laughs> yeah, but she didn't post yesterday as of like 10 o'clock so last maybe, night. So maybe, maybe the baby came. came. I don't know. So anyways, this is my origami. I love it. I was going to offer this to my friend. Yeah. She didn't seem to be crazy about the colors. The colors 
are kind of bright. And we just lost our picture because someone didn't. I didn't do the turn setting. off the thing, but whatever. <laughs> but if you would be interested in winning this sweater, because I will give it away to anyone who, you know what? Do I want to do that? I don't know, Courtney. I know that's the thing. Maybe you know we should what? save it for her. I'm not going to give this away. We have friends, we have a couple of friends. Is, yeah, we have a couple who are friends expecting, expecting, and we just don't know if they're boys or girls. So once I find out what gender it is. If this does not fit the gender, I will give this away. But I do have another thing I can give away. So this was one finished object. Gosh, this has been years. Two, three years ago. I remember when you were knitting that. It was it's a made out ago. of cottonese, uh, lime brand cottonese. It's so soft and I know. squishy. I, I love mean, the it colors really too. is. And honestly, I think those colors would work. Well, they're kind of girly. They're girly. They're not going to work for boys. They really are girly. So if she ends up not having a girl, it will be going away, get, be given away. Yeah, we will do a um, drawing. And it will also give me a chance to actually finish it. Same. So let me just tell you, this is really, if anyone wants to make an inexpensive baby blanket and garter stitch, Cottonese is the way to go. Feel that yeah. that's just so comfy. I know. I like cotton. And um, it's one of my favorite yarns. It's I've one of loved the few it. cotton yarns I can use. I've loved it ever since I started learning how to knit. And they, it was about the time that Cottonese was discontinued. They discontinued it. I went on eBay looking for a color oh that I had gosh. two of. And then they brought it back, and I was so excited. Yeah, cotton The other finished nice. object is something that I designed myself. It's simple. It's based on a sock. Christmas. That's so cute. This I will be giving away. So I'll post a thread. It's a felted Christmas stocking. Um, I think I have the show notes somewhere. Uh, it's based on a, an actual sock toe up with a short row heel, but I faced the heel in, in, in a different way. So that it would look like a traditional Christmas sock instead of being... This uh, You can see how big it was on my show notes. I'm not my show notes, sorry. Ravelry notes. Ravelry notes. I originally made this for Zachary, but we, and I, the thought was that I was going to make one for Max. We have stockings that my sister-in-law, my ex-sister-in-law made us, and then when Max was born, she made him one, but at the time when Zachary was born, my brother and her were separated, so he didn't get one. So I was going to make him one of these, but the stockings that we have are huge, and this just doesn't fit right. Yeah. So he's using my dad's. Max's is an M&M's, his is not, so I kind of feel bad, but he's using his. It, he doesn't care right now. i just yeah. going to take off Grandpa, I think, and put Zachary's name on it. That would be so, nice. If <laughs> anyone... He wears if his sock had his name on it. <laughs> We're so bad. My kids don't get new stuff for the beginning of school. They get it as they need it. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so anyways, back to this. If anyone would like a chance to win this, to give it, you can give it away. You don't have to use it. Um... Let me know. I will post a thread and just enter. Yeah, give it to me. I'd like a chance. It's nothing special. I'm sorry. It's really cute. It is cute. I like it. And again, you know, if I knew somebody more recently who's having a, you know, just had a baby. Yeah. It's probably a better way to going to have it. one at Christmas. So if you know someone who's going to have one around Christmas and would like a Christmas stocking. Or if you just want an awesome felted Christmas stocking it is, for It is. It's really nice. I had so much fun. You could bedazzle it. You could bedazzle it. You could, you could put the name on it. I, you could I, embroider the name on it. This is an I-cord bind off with an I-cord loop. Yeah. And it's huge. It is. I mean, you can see how big it is. It's nice. And it's like it, it's heirloom quality. Oh, yeah. Whatever. So... I will post a thread if you'd like to <laughs> If you want to win the, the Christmas sock. The yeah. Christmas sock so, giveaway. Those are my old finished projects. Um, you have... I got nothing. I finished that nothing. Scarf. Well, not scarf, but her little hex of pup. That's right. all I got. That's all I did. And okay. I'm doing one right now. I'm d addicted. Future projects. Future dates. Future dates. I want to finish. These are my goals. They're on the podcast, so it must be so. Okay. Which has not always been the choice. Yeah, I know. That's not anyways. how's that working out for you so far. <laughs> Mostly uh, so good, except for the sweater. Yeah. Because I, I decided not to cast on for the February Lady sweater, but that's another story. So, finish my monster. I have to finish the vest by next week. Yeah. Um, oh, speaking of which, we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, you need to go and vote when we're done. 
Yeah, we'll talk about that at the end. Um, so finish my monster, my vest. I want to cast on the he socks. I'm hoping to finish at least one, if not both, my mittens. The reason I have such grandiose goals... Was that you or me? That was my email. Oh, okay. Grandiose goals is because, again, I work eight-hour shifts overnight. Yeah, she I gets get a, a lot, lot of knitting. knitting. I at least get six hours of knitting. Um, so I want to cast on the Heath socks, and in, in a couple of weeks, I think I'm going to cast on Stephen West's Colonnade. Is he the one who did Colonnade? I think so, yes. The large version of Colonnade uh, in worsted weight. That one I think I'm actually going to have to buy yarn for, but it's going to be Patton's or Peyton's, however you want to pronounce it. I pronounce it Patton's. Me too. Like General Patton? Yeah. P A T O N S. the same way, but like general. No, I think Patton has two. two that T's. might be why some people pronounce it Patton. Yeah. But I've always known it as Patton's. Me too. Um, not to be confused with patterns, which I tend <laughs> patterns. to be patterns. Uh, so <laughs> Get me some of them knitting patterns. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do the colonnade, and I think I'm gonna buy. I think I only need two skeins of patterns, and I have this color in mind. So. Cool. Don't know the name of the color, but I have it in mind. I may look it up on Ravelry to see how the project's made in it. So that's my future dates. What about you? I got no future dates. No future dates either. This is my future date. And my actually, my real future date is the Gawain sweater mm -hmm. because I have to finish that before Rhinebeck. I will I will be heartbroken because the last time I knit a Rhinebeck sweater, I didn't finish that either. So I really need to like make that's it. That's why you stick with the worsted weight shawl. For Rhinebeck. Yeah, that's Because if I do what one I repeat each day, it's only a 10 repeat show. Yeah. But as, of course, as I'm getting bigger, you know, as it gets bigger, the repeats are going to take a little It'll longer. Take a little so. bit longer. I liked knitting that shawl, though. I should bring mine in when you're you finished. You do with need yours. to bring it in. It's we keep so saying sad. that. I know. It is I keep really sad. To bring in it. Um, so that's the future. Crushes and heartbreak? I have one heartbreak. <laughs> Oh. The other thing that I've been busy with, because I've been on non knitting, non knitting. I know what's up with that. Um, Ooh. is uh, I was making these Roman shades for my. Um, they're kind of like Roman shades. I'm making shades that I found on the internet for my living room and dining room. My husband finally finished painting the dining room. Um, I have had these. It's like the fates are conspiring against me. I think they want me to be knitting because they are not happy with me doing this project. The first thing that happened is my husband's iron rust dripped rusty water all over one of the curtains and ruined it. Did you try I thought, to wash it? I washed it. It came out. Oh, good. But that stalled me because then I had to do some research on the internet to find out how to clean out the iron, um, which I did do. And I'll just, a tip for those out there, you can clean a Rowenta iron by using one part vinegar, one part water, putting it through the iron, pressing the steam button for four minutes, and then draining it out and drying it for an hour, and then running regular water through it doing the same thing, um, which is what I did. And it took me, you know, it took me two hours, basically, to get the iron cleaned out. And then it drips some more. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> not much, though. Just a little bit. And not on the project that I was working on. I think it didn't dry. I didn't, it didn't dry all the way because it's really humid here lately. Yeah. And um, it just, it couldn't get dry. But, um, so I fixed the iron and I was happy about that. Then I cut unwisely and I ran out of material. <laughs> Again, or the first, no, the, the first, first time. time. So I had to go buy more material, and then yesterday, my sewing machine died. No. Oh. Yeah, it's dead. I talked to my mom about it this morning. You have to understand, my mom bought that sewing machine when I was like, I don't know, ten. Do you want to take my home? Oh, I'll just. I'm gonna buy one. It's right over there. It's in my computer room. Okay. Well, maybe I'll take it home and I'll give it back to you when I buy one. Yeah. That'd be great. Then I could get it done. And someone off your back. Yeah, I know, because my husband is like, when are these going to be done? I did finish four curtains before the machine And how many broke. do you need? I need um, eight. No. Total? I need eight total, so I'm halfway four. done. Four, okay. And I, they will be done today. They're all cut. All they have to do is Yeah, why done. don't I just take, give you my All right, machine. I'll take your sign. Thank it's you. It's simple. So, so, so. All it needs to do is sew forwards and backwards for this project. <laughs> Trust me, that's all I know how to sew. <laughs> <laughs> but I am going to buy a new sewing machine um, after I get back from my vacation. So, um, 
Anybody who has recommendations for a sewing machine, I don't want something fancy. I was just going to say, how elaborate do you want? I would like to spend two hundred dollars. Oh, you can get or a lot less with two hundred. <laughs> yeah, two hundred dollars or less. I don't want anything fancy. It needs to have forward, backward, zigzag. And it needs to have one of those platforms that you can take apart for so like that a leg or a cuff yeah. can go there as a minimum. And it needs to be easy to use, and it needs to be something that's not going to die in three years. Because I used to have a cheap singer that I bought when I was first married for like 80 bucks, and that died after three years. This one that just died was a Kenmore, and it's really nice, and it was my mom's. Kenmore's. I have a heartbreak on Kenmore too. Oh yeah, <laughs> and um, but my husband accidentally knocked one of the um, thread guide parts off the machine. Uh, it it cannot be replaced without considerable. Is that what broke? It's off. It's bro um. I, I don't think it can be replaced. I I did some research online. I think that it's over. Well, there's that um sewing place that we go to sometimes, not go to, but in one of the malls, the woman mall has a sewing place, maybe you can take it there. Yeah. It's, if it's worth it. It's I mean, not it's worth not, it. If it's, it's not worth, not it. worth it. It was not working well before it broke. It is now really not working no. well at all um, because the tension, it can't hold tension because that guide is gone. It can't work without the guide. I tried to find a replacement part. It's going to be difficult to find How a replacement sewing part. Machine? Um, I want to say it's probably 35, oh. 34 or 35 years old. So it's just, you know, it's at the point where I'm just going to get something that works. Um, I've had frustrations with it for the last year, and um, I'm done with it. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to get something else. But I, I, I've done some research, and I would love anybody who sews to give an opinion about a good $200 range machine. I don't want to spend more than that because I only sew... Hems. Infrequently. Well, you know, I, I like to make crafts with it. I've she made. She has knitting with my bag, Lois. She I know, some. Lois. If you're watching this, Lois, can you tell me a recommended sewing machine? So, anyway, yeah, that's my heartbreak. Um, but now maybe it will turn into a a crush because I'll be able to finish them up with Sheila's machine yes. today and my husband will get off my back. Yes. Um, mine's got a little quirk to it, too, but. Right. My, no, no, no. This this is something you can deal with. My sewing machine is my mother's. We had uh, mine was pitched, my mother's too. We had all pitched in and uh, gave her money to pick out a sewing machine because my mom was a big crafter, and it was sitting in my basement for years until I pulled it out, and it still works. So yeah, it's a good one because it actually can embroider letters on it. This one, mine can too. Mine has like hundreds of fancy stitch yeah. cartridges and well but, no mine doesn't have this fancy well it's mine's digitally punching the number oh this one's before digital <laughs> <laughs> no i can't think of the name of it it's a popular name but i can't think of it um so anyways yeah we'll take a look at that uh my heartbreak to go with her kenmore story is uh saturdays we are busy now with soccer my son my oldest son is in traveling soccer which means we travel from town to town so this was our first soccer game, and uh, we were traveling to another town. So I had washed his uniform the night before, and I was throwing it in the dryer. Well, when I threw it in the dryer, I turned it on, and it just didn't sound right. I could hear a kathunk, kathunk. <laughs> but I have tennis balls in my dryer, and I thrown in my large beach bag. Yeah. So I'm like, well, maybe that's what it is. I go down after about an hour to see, you know, how it is. <laughs> Still soaking wet. My dryer's off, wouldn't start. I push the button, wouldn't start. I check the fuse boxes because I'm like, well, maybe the maybe fuse Maybe the fuse tripped. blew. We have an old house. It's almost 100 years old. So, no, that wasn't the case. Well, the good thing is my father and my brother had moved out, and neither one of them needed their washer and dryer anymore. So, or a washer and dryer. My brother was using my father's. So I have his Maytag washer and dryer. So I said to my husband, I said, let's just move the Maytag over. We'll figure out what's going on with the other one later. And um, my old dryer would take 90 minutes or more to dry my clothes. And my wow. mother's like, that's ridiculous. Well, I never realized how ridiculous it was, it was until I used my Maytag. It took less than 50 minutes to dry it. Granted, with, my, with Max's uniform, I just threw the uniform in by itself. It was dry in two minutes because it's nylon. Here's the catering truck. <laughs> <laughs> 
Maybe the recycling truck. Anyway, anyway, so I am loving my Maytag, and I think I'm gonna switch the washer. Actually, if you can help me today, oh, maybe yeah, you sure. can help me switch the washer um, to uh, the Maytag washer, and then just uh, give the Kenmore dryer and washer. They're not very old. They're like ten years old, less than ten. Yeah, because we didn't buy them when we come, came in here. So. My Kenmore washing machine, I was telling Sheila the other day, has been through two floods. One of them five feet of water. It was Maytag. Was, no, it's Kenmore. I think. Um, I've had no issues, but you Maybe know, where I'm hard, I'm ah. hard on my my washers. I mean, you have two <laughs> kids, you got to be hard. So that was my heartbreak today. Crushes. I want to just say to Lois, we oh, heart yeah. you. We heart you, Lois. We do heart you. Um, if you haven't seen it, if you haven't seen Lois or met her, go watch the most recent Wolf Farms podcast, video yeah. podcast with Donna and Nicole. They do an interview with Lois, and it was so nice to see. Put a face to the name. Yes. And she's been getting a lot of flack for this podcaster's challenge. Yeah. And I don't think that's fair because she was just trying to make it something fun. For I don't think she intended it to get as large as she it did. Because a lot of interest happened. A lot of interest happened very quickly and she was the type like me who doesn't say no. And so I just want to give you a big heart out there, Lois, and you're doing a great job. She's putting together some fabulous stuff and, and you know, it's a lot of work and nobody should be giving her a hard time about it. And it's okay. kind of a thankless job, so, yeah. You know, it's got Naysayers. one more week. Anyone who's been complaining about it, it's got one more week. I know we've mentioned it here and there on our podcast before it started, just saying, hey, it's coming up. But, you know, again, per, per other podcasters, we've had to listen to the wet, West Knits Knit Along. We've had to listen to Camp Loopy Camp for Loopy. over summer. For and unfortunately... Months. That's what it is. When something's big and popular, like a with the Wendy Knits mystery show, a lot of people do it. Everybody did that. Um, I think October, I think Christine Kapoor does a sock every October. That's going to be coming up. So the popular things you're going to see over and over again. We apologize. But unfortunately, I don't want to say I'm a follower or a sheep, but... If I like it, I like it. I'm not going to apologize for And there's a for reason why something. viral patterns go viral. Because exactly. they're really enjoyable and, and cool. And they're good. And people are going to do them. So um, the next few months, you're going to see me doing gifts. So hopefully they won't be. But yeah, we, we heart you, Lois. We do. And um, I have bobbles and bling this week. Oh, I just wanted to say one more. Oh. Sorry, crush. One more crush. I'm into nail art. I don't have any right now, but I've been watching YouTube and videos. she made me watch them, and then I watched like five of them yesterday. YouTube man. videos on nail art, so. <laughs> you Sorry. might see some nail art. I've been reading this blog called The Daily Nail, and that, somebody plucked it because she did a design with um, sewing and quilting and stuff on her nails. She did a whole year We she changed her design every day. got to check it out, but this was like two, a year and a half ago, but... The Daily Nail, it's really I'm fun. obsessed with it, too. I don't know why. Some, there's I don't know a, why. You know why? Crazy. Because we're up here going like, oh, look, look. And when you when I see it, I'm I like, know. oh, my nails look good. And then you have the chippy bad nails like me who didn't you, do her nails. Or you me. have this where it's like, it's no nail compared to the rest. <laughs> so. All right. Anyway, sorry. That's all my crushes and I know. Breaks. We got to roll this. <laughs> we're, we're hitting that. We're hitting we're the edge. chatty edge. today. Chatty Cathy's. All right. This is my bobbles and bling. Um, isn't this pretty? Oh, that's Mad Color Week. Mad Color Fiber Arts. Oh. Mad Color is... Fiber Arts. This is, um, and you can find it at, there, here's the catering truck. I'll just <laughs> let it go by. <laughs> it's going to take a minute. Pick up my trash. Northside Catering. <laughs> um, Mad Color Fiber Arts in the NV colorway. This is Sock Options Classica, which is 420 yards. It's a nice yardage. 80% um, superwash merino, 20% nylon. And um, you can find it at www.madcolorfiberarts.com. Heather, who dyes this yarn, is the cutest person I have ever seen. We met her at the um, yarn, yarn crawl. crawl. And I just love her. She's really nice. And she's a friend of Diane and Oz that we always mention her on our show, so I had to say her name. Anyway, when she turned 40, she gave 40% off in her store. So I got these two skeins for like $26, which is a really good price. And I will make something cool out of these. I wanted to get more, but I didn't 
log in until late in the day. And Diana and Oz bought all the things. I was just going to say, Diana and Oz are for She, like, cleaned the store out. She's out of control, man. Hey, that's the benefit you have. I know. But Mad Color Fiber Arts is one of my favorite um, vendors on Etsy. I, uh, she actually has some, she's not on Etsy anymore. I think she has her own website now. But she's one of my favorite yarn vendors. I love her. I have, I love her campfire colorway, which is orange. Madcolorfiberarts.com. .com. She's not on Etsy anymore. I know I said that. <laughs> it's, it's the, it's the sinus allergy thing. It's just really making me crazy. Ragweed's really bad. Up but here. she, she has lace weight. I've used her lace weight a couple of times. Fingering yeah. weight. Um, she has this gorgeous, um, it's heavy, it's like heavy fingering weight or a, a sport um, cash merino blend, Ooh. which is really lovely. She does worsted weight. She has all weights, and um, she's going to be at Stitches. I Stitches or Ryan Becker? No, she's going to be at the thing that Diane's going to soar. Oh, um, which is a spinning a spinning retreat. So check her out. She's awesome. And um, boy. Gossip and innuendo, I'm just going to mention one more time. Don't forget the South, the South Adirondack Fiber Festival. Is on this so weekend? September 24th and no. 25th, so it's next weekend. Um, in Washington County Fairgrounds in Greenwich, New York. And you can find them on www.adkfiber.com. It sounds like an awesome event. Check it out. I will be in the Outer Banks of North Carolina so if you're in the Outer Banks, let me know. Maybe we can do a... I'm going to be... Actually, I'm going to be in the Southern Outer Banks in Emerald Isle, North Carolina. Mm. So. so that means a separate podcast next yes. week. Yes. Hopefully both of us will have a guest. I'm hoping. On our it's our last podcast. week, so we have to. I know. Well, we were trying to work out a guest visit from... Which may still happen. Which may still happen. But... But um, so far, we haven't heard from someone. I PM'd her. Oh, you did? I did. <laughs> she said if it doesn't happen, it will definitely happen, but someday. not during the yeah. podcast. Oh, definitely challenge. we're going to have her. Oh, someday. absolutely. And I mentioned maybe we can get together with the rest of the Northeast clan. That would be fun. That would be fun. to do a big one. Um, also, I just wanted to tell people, I posted it on the group. I did add plus-size T-shirts and a long sleeve T-shirt. I, did, I added plus size in the scoop neck and v-neck for all of the designs on the Cafe Press store. I also added a v-neck version of the regular women's size and a long sleeve version of the regular women's size. They do not make a plus size long sleeve shirt because Cafe Press is evil and discriminates and apparently against apparently plus, plus size, size women, women don't need to wear long sleeves. I don't know. Apparently not. And apparently they need to pay like $8 more for their t-shirt. Um... Which that's an exaggeration, but I, I, there, you're the plus size so t-shirts fun. are more. Ex it just bothers me. Having been recently plus sized, I'm just gonna rant this really quick. We spend money too, and in the U.S., probably more people are plus sized than regular yeah, size. FYI, um, why are you pissing us off by <laughs> making us pay more for your clothing and giving us less cute clothing options? I mean, give me a break. And plus size women wear long sleeves, Cafe Press. End of rant. You done? Anyway, I'm also working on a new t-shirt design, which I showed Sheila, and I will unveil it probably at the end of October. I just want to say I was in touch with Tracy, who's been doing the uh, project for Remy. Mm -hmm. Newborn hats. Um, you've heard it. I think Diane from Knittable supports it. So um, she was kind enough to offer to test knit my hat. Um, I told her I had already had the test knitters, but I may just, you know, can't hurt to throw another test knitter out there. Um, but I may send her the hats that I have already done. Ooh, and you can send mine too. But I know, you know, Sweet Caroline, there's so many projects out there um, for newborn preemie hats, NICU hats. Uh, just, you know, if you have extra sock yarn, just throw a hat together. Keep it on a pile, and when you get a big enough pile, contact me. Tracy or Melissa from His and Hers or Diane from Knittables, any of the podcasters would probably be able Wherever to it's most steer convenient. you to a place or take them and send them to a place. Yeah. So just, you know, if you have a little scrap yarn, just think about, you know, a little baby. Because I was talking to Tracy via PM. Um, Zachary was in the cardiac ICU for close to three months. 
And we were given a lot of um, a hat, which was gorgeous. I don't think I have it anymore. Um, blankets, which I still have. Um, and they meant so much to us because he was a little guy in the NICU. They're not allowed to really wear clothing because they're attached that can't be to accessible so much. To, yeah. And um, actually, I want to say Mama Nijarn was also doing a Vita hat where sometimes they do have things coming out of either an IV or other things out of their head. There's, I think, a Vita hat that would be good, too. I might try and do some of those. Um, but a little hat makes it look more human, more personal is probably more a better like a way baby. of saying And the blankets, Unless, definitely, like... because the blankets, you know, they, they have them in incubators, but they really don't want them to be. They want them to... Gen um, Regulate, their, body. regulate their own body temperature. Mm -hmm. So blankets um, are nice too. And we have this, you know, the Project Linus is, is what is most popular. So I just want to say, you know, think of the little guys. Um, you know, we're still struggling with ours. He's not so little anymore, but it's unfortunately, it's a daily thing for us. Day by so day. any little thing you can do like that really helps for it the does. family and the patient. And unfortunately, if the patient doesn't survive, you still have something. It's a memory. A memory of happier times, as much as they can be. And on that cheerful note. Sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. We have we have four minutes. we got to wrap. <laughs> so on that note, if you're watching us on iTunes, please leave a star rating or a comment. Uh, not just for us, for other podcasts. Yes. If you didn't like the show, just turn it off. Please don't be mean and say nasty things. It's not nice. But constructive criticism is Absolutely. welcome. <laughs> if you think we chat too much, by all means, please tell us. I think we know this. Yeah. Um, if you are watching us on iTunes, the blog notes, show notes will be on knit1heart2.blogspot.com. And also a link to our how you can join our Ravelry group and Cafe Press. buy anything at Cafe Press. We have and all the other podcasters we watch yes, or listen we have to quite or a read. Because we do read some blogs. We have quite a list. Uh, if you need to reach us, you can reach us at knit1heart2 at gmail.com. Sorry. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm on Twitter as knit1heart2. And I'm on Twitter as knit1wendy. We're on Plurk as knit1heart2. We, we share, share the, the account. account. I think that's it. I think that's it. Knit with heart. Knit with heart. Have a good week, everyone. Bye.